What's up guys? My name is Tyler Jack Harris and I am here with Amanda Maccabee. And we wanted to uh, take a few minutes here uh, on this episode and really try to unpack for you uh, an experience that we both went through um, at this point. It would be three weeks ago uh, in Park City, Utah. Uh, it was called Upgrade Your Human. And it was hosted by the one and only Steve Weatherford, who I am so grateful, so grateful, reached out to me uh, and asked if we wanted to go. And um, there's so much to unpack. We're probably going to only get to a fraction of it. And you'll see more stuff come out through content uh, over the following weeks. These lessons that were learned that are kind of just coming to fruition or just kind of sinking in uh, that we can really, really, really provide some value from. Uh, but I wanted Amanda to be on here because I was so grateful that she was there and got to experience this with me along with one of my dear friends in North Carolina, Chris Vester, who a lot of you know uh, from following my content. Uh, but I just wanted to get uh, Amanda's take uh, as well as mine. And really, I just needed help unpacking this because there were so many lessons and so many different things that we experienced that it's it was almost overwhelming. I kind of felt like when I got back, I was like, how do I even explain to mm -hmm. people what we just did? Uh, so maybe give uh, everybody um, a little bit of framework of your mindset going into it, and then ultimately will lead to your mindset coming out, and I'll kind of do the same thing. Okay, awesome. Um, you know, you and I talked about just before leaving, my mindset was – actually one of a little bit of insecurity, yeah. you know, if I'm transparent and open mm -hmm. about it. Um, I didn't know who Steve Weatherford was because yeah. I am, you know, not a huge, I'm, I don't watch a ton of NFL. And, and so as you started telling me about the people or that are on social media, <laughs> but hey, I just, while I was at Upgrade Your Human, I made my first Instagram post. So we're getting somewhere. I saw it and I was confused. I was like, does that say Amanda Mac? <laughs> like, did you post this? Like by yourself? So I was in I was a little intimidated by this um, you know, most fit man also, not just a NFL punter, um, Super Bowl winner, but and all of the people. I mean, just the level of um just not I mean, really if you look at it from just the world's view of success mm -hmm. and financial success impact. and impact and influence on social media on um in so many different arenas. I just felt intimidated, you know, because, <laughs> and it was so funny that you said that. I'm like, how could you feel intimidated? I but you feel way better. Yeah. Thanks. Like, oh, you are? I am too. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went in really not knowing what to expect exactly. I knew we would be doing some um, cold water exposure and, you know, I remember I was like, so Tyler, have you been doing any, you know, to prep for this? And he's like, uh, no. It never gets easier. Why would you do that? <laughs> um, but I had been doing some just to get my, you know, kind of confidence up for that. And um, and then, of course, the breathing. I knew we would do a bit of breathing, which I was super excited about because that has been a powerful, powerful thing that I've um, implemented into my life. And so, so going into it, a lot of intimidation, a lot of just what is there to what is there that i'm going to be getting out of this what exactly are we going to be doing but i also had a high level of expectation like i knew um i actually felt like the lord had really put on my heart like do this yeah. and um which you know i know also i was pretty much the only girl there was one other that came as a spouse and was not actually intending on doing anything mm -hmm. and d she is fantastic right. and and jumped right in and um fully engaged but it was you know just that who am i to even be worth coming mm -hmm. and what i would never think that about another human being ever and so when we talk about what happened and the shift that occurred um I, I can't wait to share that part because it really is pretty phenomenal. Yeah, and and for those that have no knowledge of, of what it is that we did, and, and we're wondering, did she say like, and we also breathe? Like, you should probably breathe. <laughs> um, so it's really it's the Wim Hof breathing method, uh, and this whole event stemmed from a week that Steve had in Poland with Wim Hof. And if you don't know Wim Hof, just Google Wim Hof. It's W I M H O F. They call him the Ice Man. And you'll probably go down a rabbit hole for a few hours of the most interesting content you've ever found if you Google him. Um, but 
Steve had spent a week uh, with Lewis Howes, Jesse Itzler, Aubrey Marcus, just a bunch of incredible people um, in Poland at Wim Hof's house doing the same things that we did, uh, probably a little bit more aggressively and a little bit more intensely. Um, but our business partner, Joseph uh, Caldwell, who a lot of you know, um, was there the week after. And seeing Steve through his Instagram stories, experience what he experienced there, I was like, holy cow, this is just, this is intense, but it looks incredible. And then when Joseph came back, just his explanation of all the things that he experienced and the breakthroughs and just the, just the energy um, that he felt there, uh, I was like, man, I, I want to do this. Steve decided when he got back have to create more experiences like this and decided to host basically one of his own. So he had two of the Wim Hof instructors there, um, Dr. Trisha Smith, which was the first, I believe, Wim Hof instructor in the U.S. And she now teaches other Wim Hof instructors and has spoken to, you know, groups all over the U.S. and all over the world. I think she said 1,200 people in Sydney she spoke to on these uh, breathing methods and cold exposure. And so when we talk about breathing, we're talking about intense breathing sessions, um, you know, 30, 45 minutes of various levels of breathing that got very, very, very intense uh, for me and I think for most people there. But, you know, back to what Amanda was saying, like when I think of the word powerhouse, like that was a powerhouse, like it was a house full of very powerful people. But I felt like every single person there, and we're not going to mention every single person there because I'll forget someone and I don't want to leave them out. But every single person that was there, I feel like brought a specific energy, brought a specific um, character trait, a specific experience that made all of us have this just incredible weekend together um, that I honestly, I'll, I'll never, ever forget. Uh, and it wasn't just in the getting in ice water. It wasn't just getting in the lake when it was snowing outside or, you know, we climbed a mountain and basically hardly any clothes, sho uh, shoes and shorts, um, whatever else you had on, I guess, for females. Um, <laughs> and climbing a mountain in the snow. Uh, it wasn't just that, it was you know the meals that we had together and just the time that we had to get to know one, each other, uh, one another. Um, some of the guys I had met before uh, at different events, but never really gotten to sit down and just have real, real conversations with. And those are relationships that I know that I'll have for the rest of my life. And so it was, it was amazing. But let's talk about the very first night because Steve just wanted to start off with a bang and was like, we're getting in the cold tonight. And on the agenda, it didn't say that. Uh, well, on the agenda, it said we're going to break the ice. And I guess that's what he meant. Yes. I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, OK, what are we going to all share about each other? Mm -hmm. Yep, that was that was not what he had in mind. And it, I couldn't believe when he said we were going to do it that night, it is literally freezing oh, yeah. park city utah was where we were then that was probably the coldest night. it was the coldest night yeah. and but it was so beautiful i mean mountains all around just yeah. the whole setup was incredible and so there was kind of the the energy of you're going to do this no matter what everybody is going to do this kind of the support of everybody but they literally had how many how many 3, thousand thousand three thousand pounds of ice yeah. in these so two the two pool so yes. 1500 pounds of ice in the pool that we got in and it it was definitely um much different than doing a little cold water plunge that i had done prior like it was more ice than water <laughs> yeah it was um but it was i mean doing it together there's something mm -hmm. that is different about i think humans joining together in an endeavor and just the energy that is created together and the like as crazy as it was and as difficult as it was, it was almost exhilarating to yeah. do it, you know, with other people. And and I had not really learned after. So as you get into learning about the Wim Hof Method, after we got out of the ice, we learned how to warm our body up from the inside out. And, you know, we're out there doing all these, these movements and these, you know, crazy chanting stuff. And we looked like a bunch of crazies out there, but it, it was, was freezing. And we were soaking wet. <laughs> yes. Like it wasn't like, hey, everybody dry off, change. We're going to come out and do some, you know, breathe, some warming up uh, exercises. It was like the second we got out of the water, you're in horse stance doing these like almost like Tai Chi, yeah. like movements and breath to like warm yourself up. And that was colder to me than than it, being in the water. It was. My my toes that entire night, I mean I put 
two pairs of like woolly socks on and I think they didn't really warm up for about three hours yeah. but um, but for for me I wanted to yeah. say Tyler prior to going I don't think I had real understanding on all of the benefits yeah. of the cold water exposure um, the breathing I definitely did because I I felt like I'd already seen mm-hmm. Uh, the results and and some different things that had occurred during the breathing that uh, was just beautiful and and I have seen just my um, my stress level really throughout the day and I guess I didn't realize that the cold you know Dr. Trish being there and explaining the science behind all of it um, that it it resets your stress threshold Mm -hmm. like it's literally going to your parasympathetic right and the understanding, I think, because at first I'm like, why are, I mean, I'm doing this just because I can, right? Yeah. Like, I can do anything I put my mind to. Like, that's kind of my, the way that I have always thought. Like, if I set my mind to it, I'm going to do it, period. But I didn't know why I was doing it. Mm. And now, like, today, you know, I'm, I'm ending every shower in the absolute cold. And, and breathing through it and allowing that to be the beginning of my day because I understand now the benefits of it. Yeah, and one thing she said is that stress is a good thing. And, you know, with our work environment, especially amidst all this chaos going on with uh, COVID-19 and this pandemic, um, stress is <laughs> it's prevalent uh, in everyone's life right now. But the fact that that forcing stress in a environment like that with cold water is a very good thing. But to me, again, to your point, uh, you know, we talk about seeking discomfort. And for me, that just meant like, okay, I'm going to experience this stress just to get through it. But what I realized in that uh, first session was that it was more about being able to experience that stress, but then being able to be aware and being able to quickly find peace in massive stress That's right. so it wasn't just like can i get in there and can i stay long enough and can i get out and then be done and i experienced this stress i experienced this discomfort i feel better because i overcame it it was how quickly can i get in this very very stressful situation but get to a place where i'm calm get to a place where i'm at least able to breathe um, no less be in a peaceful breathing state and that first session one of the things i did want to mention is these whoop bands uh, that we have on um, they were one of the sponsors of the event, and I'm obsessed with this thing now. Like, I don't think I'll ever take it off. Um, I had worn it when Steve first started wearing it about a year ago, and I was like, eh, I don't know, because again, I didn't know what I was tracking. Uh, but there's so much data that we were able to collect, not only during the event, but every single day now I'm looking at it to see like how my body's reacting, uh, the things that are affecting my body throughout the day. But it tracks your heart rate, tracks a lot of different things. But I remember during that first session, we were inside the house right at the door, kind of talking about what's happening. And I was super calm. Like, my heart rate's always a little high. So my heart rate was like, you know, 70, 80, 90. But when we stood looking down at this pool, when we got outside, it went to like 168. So I was I basically, that. I was freaking out, like <laughs> freaking out because I just didn't want to step that first step into this cold Um, but it was amazing how once i got in again i think it was having the group environment Mm -hmm. um, how i was able to find peace more so the second day um, the first day when i got in and someone mentioned it that was kind of across the pool from me like i was in there with a group but i was by myself like there were two guys across um the pool from me and I was staring in between them just staring off into the distance like (laughs) just trying to fight through it myself Um, the second day when we went and got into the lake um, we all went in arm in arm like with our uh, hands on each other's shoulders and we walked in together we were intentionally making eye contact with one another we were talking and I don't know if that's what made it so much easier it wasn't any warmer I don't think, I mean, maybe a degree or two warmer as far as the water that we were down in. But I think that that aspect of being able to connect with other people while in that environment, the second time, like, was a piece of cake. Like, I felt mm-hmm. like, I mean, we were all in a circle just kind of sharing what we were feeling, you know, what we were thinking. And I felt like we could stay there for an hour. I mean, when they told us to come out, it was like, okay, but it's kind of like, do we have to? I mean, right. we're kind of in the middle of a conversation <laughs> here. Um, so I think for me, that was a big thing of like, 
realizing the power of relationship and realizing the power of being able to just look somebody in the eye and connect with them when you're going through something stressful and how that in and of itself um, kind of creates more uh, peace inside of you. Um, but yeah, it was it was incredible. I love that. I think, um, you know, when you, I didn't realize your heart rate went up mm. that much and I didn't look at mine to see what actually occurred. I'm yeah. sure mine did the same thing. But when you think about when we enter into stressful situations, like I remember some of the times that I've ever, you know, before public speaking and before I, I had done that quite a bit, that the way that you know, your heart starts racing or before you're about to do anything that's maybe new or different or before an interview, you know, something um, as as simple as having a tough conversation with somebody that you're, you know, having to deal with some conflict potentially. What what I've learned through through the Wim Hof method and through this weekend is how much in control we actually are. Mm -hmm. And I think so often we think we're out of control, especially people that experience um, anxiety, yeah. PTSD even, the panic attacks. Like there's always the, um, the feeling of out of, the out of control feeling. Fire and flight. yes, and, and I think that um, what this does and what, what I really have learned is that the breath, what, when you can really fully connect to your breath and uh, it it just it's a game changer and i know dr trish and um and just that when they shared about their own experiences yeah. and the overcoming of some pretty severe not dr trish but yeah. um i know when you know leah was sharing her story of how much i mean the wim hof method it literally transformed her life i mean and and her story i would recommend you know finding her on instagram and just yeah. really, leah leah scott yeah she's yeah. she is um phenomenal just powerhouse and yeah. and has overcome a lot but you know that um i just i think it's a i think that makes me so excited i have some friends with ptsd and have been sharing with them about this and just have a lot of hope that this can really impact and and make a difference in their life yeah and there's something that you mentioned about when we first got in the cold water you said you said it resets your what did you say it resets your stress like it it helps your brain to understand what stress actually is because yeah. we think stress is you know somebody not going at the green light and they're in front of you and it's like you're in a hurry and our brain gets we get flooded thinking that's stressful mm -hmm. and so it helps to put in perspective your body actually feels what real stress actually is yeah. again that's exactly what i was going to say is that perspective change and knowing that like when you are in a actual stressful situation like being in ice cold water that if you can calm yourself down in that situation, how much better are you going to be to calm yourself down in the random things that we call stress in our everyday life, but to still be able to be cognizant and, and more aware of our breath during those situations, just like we were uh, in the cold water. Um, you know, one thing for me about the experience uh, that was very unique was the food. Uh, so I definitely want to give a shout out to Chef Camus. Um, world-renowned chef so we ate uh, basically a vegan diet um, and for me that's very different than anything I would have ever imagined eating and kind of coming into that weekend I was like man I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be eating much because I'm like you'd be living off your protein bars yeah I brought a lot <laughs> of stuff because I was like there's probably gonna be a lot that I don't want to eat I'm a pretty picky eater by nature um, and every single meal was like this experience. Like every single item in every single meal had like 20 to like 70 ingredients, half of which I couldn't pronounce, half of which I didn't recognize. <laughs> but it was so good. Like the most delicious food I have ever eaten in my entire life combined all into one weekend. Like every single thing I ate, I was just like, Oh my gosh, this is so good. I don't know what it is, but it's so amazing. And I kind of didn't even, I didn't even want to know what it was. I was like, just don't tell me because it's so good. I don't want to take away from, from the, uh, the taste by knowing it's something that I before would have thought there's no way I would eat that, mm -hmm. but the way that it was all put together and, and to see her like 
sheer just like joy um, to prepare these meals. And it was it truly was like her way of showing love is through food. And I mean, down to every detail of she would say, okay, lift your bowl. And there'd be this like beautiful quote. Now lift this plate. And there'd be this symbol that meant something for our group that weekend. And every single meal was just like this journey we would go on together and just trying all these different things and mixing stuff together. And, and it was just awesome. And the fact that like, nothing she made had ever really been made that way before it was just kind of taking all the ingredients we had and just putting them together in this beautiful way like the most colorful like bright food i've ever even seen mm -hmm. like i don't know if that i've ever seen food that color right like these bright deep reds and purples and pinks and greens and blue i'm like i, I told someone that it was like you know on that scene in hook where mm -hmm. they're all sitting around the table and they start like dreaming of this food and they have that food fight and it's all those crazy bright colors like that that was the colors of the food that we were eating yeah. uh, and it was just amazing and really that was kind of a cornerstone of the event was being able to gather around a table and experience these incredible meals together and the conversations that would come from that specifically coming from like man how amazing is that rap that you're eating like what is that in there i don't know like what is you know what is this and the conversation that would surround that uh were so uh entertaining um but led to such a unique experience uh, all around um so let's talk about the the hike the hike i think the hike for me was actually one of my absolute favorite mm -hmm. parts the obviously the the connecting and the conversations and I can't, I mean, I'm like thinking of all my favorite parts and I could go into many, but um, before we go into the hike, I wanna say yeah. it was so funny to me or when with the food, with Chef Camu, the love and beauty in it, it was out of this world. Mm -hmm. But I remember this moment and you're like, are those flowers? Are, <laughs> are we? Are we supposed to eat the flowers? And but it was it was a, and it was amazing and we ate the flowers on the food and and it just it made me feel like we were back in the garden of Eden and yeah. it was just it was just like magnificent. I remember somebody next to me one night was like I haven't eaten this many flowers since I was in the second grade. <laughs> And, and as soon as he said that, I started laughing because, like, the first night I had this big bite of this, like, soup type th thing. I don't, I don't even know what it was, but it was one of my most favorite things, that orange mm -hmm. soup. Um, and I remember having this big spoonful going towards my mouth. And there was, like, this big flower, like, like an actual flower. And I was, like, looking around, like, is this garnish? Is this ridiculous? But uh, okay, and then just like ate a whole flower, like the whole like head of a or whatever you call that part of a flower. And I was like, huh, I don't know if I was supposed to eat that, but whatever was around it kind of made up for it. Uh, but that was <laughs> that was funny. Uh, but yeah, the hike uh, for me again was it. It was I don't know if it was the most fun part for me, but it was where I had like the deepest realization of how powerful the things that we had already gone through that weekend were because it was 36 degrees outside there was snow coming down three-fourths of the time that we were hiking and we hiked for close to four hours like three and a half hours or so in shorts so i had shorts on and boots i had a backpack but no shirt no pants and literally on the way back Amanda was right behind me. I was like, I got to take this hat off. Like my head was like soaking wet in sweat. And like between my back and my backpack was just like dripping sweat. And I don't know that there was a minute. Like when we got out of the car, I was like, oh my gosh, this is cold. But then we took our clothes off and got ready to go. I don't think there was a minute where I was ever like, man, I'm cold. It was amazing. I, I was I was astonished. I, I thought going into it, I was building myself up. Like, okay, I can do this. This is, this is going to be good. And then the same experience when, you know, we, I mean, I, I still wore a tank top and, and just some small shorts, but it, it was amazing that our body, she said, your body is so quick to adapt. Mm -hmm. And that, it was brilliant. But it was also, I think for me being very much an introvert, that the hike was this opportunity. I did spend quite a bit of it in silence and just processing through already what had happened that weekend. And there was um, quite a lot of real emotional breakthroughs mm -hmm. and I think physical breakthroughs for some people, yeah. the barriers that they broke through and in, in what they were able to accomplish. And 
it, it was this overwhelming just sense of like expectation of what was still to come and then just absolute gratitude for what we'd already experienced together and the beauty of it. I mean, you see some of the pictures. It was just, you know, God's creation is just so, it's just lovely. It's just, it was so wonderful. And, and to know, like, I think about how people must have lived, you know, thousands of years ago and, and I mean, probably they had skins or whatever, but I think it was very common for people to be in the elements. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that we, we haven't talked about yet was each morning we woke up and we all went outside in our bare feet and just we felt the earth like we felt and connected with the earth and and i had never dr trish had us do these eye exercises where we would focus and then do a panoramic and kind of let your eyes uh just relax and it was really fascinating i'd never really done that before but it makes you very very present Mm -hmm. and i feel like the entire weekend so much of everything that we did was was learning to live in the present moment because when you're there that's what your breath is right the breath is the part of getting you present and it's mindfulness it's all the things that Mm -hmm. you know we learn in meditation and, and um deep prayer and those things but the the morning uh, ritual, you know, I, I've had a morning ritual myself for a couple of years now, but I've added that, yeah. like, just go, and it's getting too warm now. I'm like, I want mm-hmm. it to be cold out here. What's happening? <laughs> yeah, I know you're right. Like, that, that was, that was the first time I'd ever done that, too. So, like, I would pick a part in the mountain, like a peak of a mountain, and you're focusing, like, intensely on this peak, and then she would say, okay, now soft focus. And so, you basically, I'm, I'm staring at something but in my mind, I'm trying to see how far this way I can look, how far this way I can look, and if I can go a little further. And then at one point she actually said this, which is what I was experiencing, is that it's almost like looking at yourself like in a globe. And so I'm still focused on that one area, but I can see everything around. And, and it was almost weird because I'm staring at this, but I'm looking over here and I'm like, okay, what are those things that are on the ground right here? Who's to my left over here? What can I see over there? But I'm still at that same moment then we would go back to focus and then go back to soft focus and i'm noticing all the things not only with my eyes but like the birds chirping and the wind and just different things that you could um that you could hear and how your your heartbeat yes and your heartbeat she said and you could you could feel it when you were focused it would speed up Mm -hmm. and then when you allowed yourself to see all the other things around it that's it we are so one of the things that we talked a lot about we're so disconnected with our bodies we live as if they're just like a jacket that we just can throw off rather than really understanding like like being really connected and experiencing and feeling um this great gift that we have and and treating it so well and so i i just loved the you know just that that morning time it was and and the spine i had not really learn how she would have us you know move our spine in a way that um you'd go you know to the sides and then move move it forward and around tyler you'll have to stand up and and do a whole demonstration of it but it really i wake up oftentimes with my lower back being very tight and that really relieves it i mean it's it gets that movement and the the spinal fluid to you know start um shifting and then the bouncing to get your lymphatic because the lymphatic system doesn't have any pump there's nothing circulating it so we have to do that that's one of the uh, headstands in yoga are my absolute favorite move and i love i i literally think when i'm in my headstand my lymph system like draining you know moving it all down and and it was the same thing with the bouncing it's like getting the movement of it so the nice thing too is that like it didn't take an hour like it took seven minutes, eight right. minutes that we were out there. But when you came back inside, you felt so refreshed, even to the point that Chris Vester, and I don't want to steal his story, but he woke up one morning with uh, with basically the visual signs that he was going to have a migraine. And he's dealt with migraines since he was 15 years old, and they're completely debilitating. And he was so fearful of that because a lot of his is food-based, and knowing that he was going into an environment where he's going to be eating all these different foods, he was 
concerned that he may have a migraine and that he wouldn't be able to experience or even participate uh, in the activities of the day. Well, he woke up that morning and he had the visuals like he knew that was coming. So he took his migraine medicine, but it was still there. But after that morning uh, routine and getting out there and really the focus, soft focus and the breath work that we did outside, it instantly snapped his migraine he had zero symptoms the rest of the entire day which is super powerful to see that uh, happen especially i mean he's a big you know muscular guy you don't think of him as being someone that would be weak or that would allow something to impede upon him to be able to function uh, but to see something that he was like no like if if we hadn't done that like i would have had to be in my room the rest of the day mm -hmm. but for it to be completely gone it was cool like seeing him have that moment of like, oh my gosh, this is super powerful. Um, so let's go into kind of the, the breathing sessions and really just that environment, not necessarily like the specifics of like what we did during the breathing, but just like being able to hear everybody share. I mean, that was some of my favorite times is just hearing people what they experienced through the breathing. Yeah, I, I think the level of vulnerability that was uh, that occurred when we were all together in those moments it's when you walk in i mean all we we had you know 25 yoga mats and we're all laying uh on the ground and and dr trish is taking us through all the breathing exercises and and then you you have to do it to experience like we could try to explain it but if you if you go do the wim hof breathing you will understand uh, what happens but um to do it with other people was absolutely like it was mind-blowing to me because really truly the level of connectedness mm -hmm. and love that i felt for all of the people there was it was otherworldly i mean it it was overwhelming yeah. and many of us in different parts of of you know because we did this breathing probably five yeah. different sessions yeah. um there were a couple where I just had tears flowing, you know, down my face and 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 the the vulnerability that of what people shared, like truly, I think when we look back at that weekend, it was breakthrough moments and and yes, we'll remember certain conversations sure. and but there were some breakthrough moments where I think people, I know me personally, I left literally transformed mm -hmm. in in some different areas of my thinking my life that um i mean i just i could get emotional like thinking of it and and what happened with you and i won't i mean you can decide if you <laughs> share any of it but it it was like it was so it was like i felt so honored to be there and yeah. so grateful and thankful and and in those moments there was like that whole intimidation factor completely gone mm -hmm. the the way that i saw not just others because i always look at other people and i always see the greatness in other people like they it's so easy for me to see that but i often keep my focus out rather than in and it was in some of those breathing moments for me that like I didn't see myself any different. The amount of love and value and greatness that I saw in everyone else, it was like I fully, fully, and this has been you know, a 20 year process for me of, yeah. of coming to places of like valuing myself and loving myself. And, um, but this was a like tangible, something shifting in my mind that occurred and it was just beautiful. Yeah, and I think um, what created that environment was like just this this element of like no ego, no judgment. And I think it was this realization that like we all have stuff going on. Like we all are struggling with something. We all deep down have issues and things that we haven't uh, wrestled with yet, things that we haven't uncovered, things that we've buried for sometimes decades, uh, things from childhood, things from this year, things that we're dealing with right now that would have been so easy when put in a group of powerful people to completely disregard and to just fight through. But knowing that there were 20 other people in the room that quite frankly were strangers. I mean, they were strangers. Like none of us were, except for me, Amanda and Chris, like all the other guys, even the ones that I had had some conversations with, we still didn't know each other. 
but there was just this complete like oneness wholeness of the group that it wasn't just like you know during a breathing session like what i was experiencing it was what i was experiencing and how what i was experiencing was creating an experience for this person and how what i was experienced was creating an experience for this person and how what i experienced created an experience for this person which created experience for the person next to them which created this ultimate experience that we all were able to have together but then when we shared you know the stories afterwards and and you know here's what i felt and here's what i was going through people were extremely transparent extremely vulnerable but it was a safe place to be able to do that because you knew uh, that this group of people there was so much love and trust and confidence in the people that were with us i think because we had gone through those difficult things like i don't think you know if we had just gotten there and the first thing we did was breathe that everyone would have shared as deeply after have as much as after having gone through the cold water and gone through these hikes um, and i'll save my experience for another video because i'll talk about it for an hour and get super emotional talking about it um, but the last morning session like i had an absolute breakthrough um, something that was very 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 much needed um, talk about crying i mean i just wailed i think wailing is the only way you could describe it I mean, it was very 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 physical um very aggressive uh, honestly like hyperventilating because i you know, just couldn't breathe because i was just crying so um so deeply and for me to be able to hear other people talk about their experience experiencing me going through that breakthrough was just the most beautiful thing ever and amanda you know, it seems like divine appointment that she recorded that last video or that last breathing session because she wanted to hear Dr. Trish. She wanted to be able to go back and listen to Dr. Trish as she facilitated the breathing and how she did that. And we forgot to turn the recording off. And so we had that whole last session recorded of me having this experience and then of everybody sharing what their experience was. And it's just beautiful. Like I'm so grateful to be able to have that because as powerful as it was, I know five years from now, there will be little details of it that I would forget. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I have the whole thing recorded, which is like an absolute treasure um, for me to be able to keep for the rest of my life. Um, but for me, the breathing was what I was most excited about because that's what I had been practicing the most. Mm -hmm. That's what I felt like I'd been getting the most of. Um, even just as we're talking, like when you really get into this breathing method, you, get, you become so more cognizant or, or just more aware of your breath throughout your normal day. Like I'm a shallow breather. I think we're all shallow breathers, you know, chest breathers. But, you know, I'll be in a conversation with someone or I'll be on a phone call. I'll be doing some work and I'm like, ah, oh, deep breath. And then keep moving, but just being more cognizant yeah. of the fact that, like, you know, you need to you need to get more connected with your breath uh, throughout the day. Um, so I was most excited about the breathing, um, but you know, for two days when we were there, I was a little frustrated with the breathing sessions because I felt like I was like getting closer and closer and closer. Like I could feel deep inside that there was a breakthrough that needed to happen. Like there was some area of my body that needed to be touched in order for me to release all this that was inside of me and for two days i just couldn't get there mm -hmm. and it was so frustrating and that's why i'm so grateful in that last morning literally it was the last activity we did before we you know parted our ways and and went to the airport to head home and i was just so grateful that i got to have that experience that was you know after i had it, it was like can't imagine having not experienced that and going home and and not having that level of uh, breakthrough and transformation in my own life and and to be able to be spoken over mm -hmm. by people and spoken into uh, by people uh, after that experience. I mean, I'll never forget it ever, yeah. ever, it, ever forget it. You know, and I think about when that was happening. There were, it was just so amazing to me how I see God's hand work mm -hmm. in such beautiful ways. And that morning, because we all kind of moved around, you know, sometimes we were in the same kind of vicinity of, of when we were breathing. But that morning, it was Chris, Steve, and myself next to each other. And literally, I feel like the three of us were in prayer for you. Mm -hmm to be able to get your like spirit and, and heart open enough to go to that place. And, you know, even talking to to Chris and um, 
about it. Like it was, I I love the way of just the interconnectedness that we can truly have with other people. Um, and it, I mean, I'm almost going to start crying thinking of it. Like it's, it's like to have the opportunity to like pour love and and we so often don't talk about this this sixth sense thing of like of prayer and of um things that are happening around us that are really more real than like our physical bodies right and and like there was just magic i mean i i cannot explain it other than God moved. I mean, God just, and it wasn't just in your life. Like it was literally every person that was there could go through and share things that happened. And what was beautiful is there, not everybody there would say that they were a Jesus follower. Mm-hmm. There were many people from from different um, religious backgrounds and and beliefs, and it that did not stop the love and the connectedness that we experienced together and it was it there was so much honor and love and respect that we had for one another and i think that was because of that that um was what was allowed really it Mm -hmm. it allowed everybody in there to move to a new place in their life yeah, and, and and I want to acknowledge Steve for really creating that space. Not only creating that space in hosting this event, but in every session, like his prayer throughout the session, before and after the session, like God was in the very center of everything we did. But looking at it from the perspective of someone that doesn't have a relationship with God, it was done in a way that was accepted. Mm -hmm. And not only accepted, it was obvious. Like, like there were so many moments that we could point out to where, like, it was blatantly obvious that God was in that room, like that the Holy Spirit was, like, working through every single person, even someone that may never have even heard the word Holy Spirit before in their life. But it was there, and everyone could feel it, and it was powerful, and it was tangible. Uh, but one example that I'll give is the fact that you know that last morning when I was you know going through this uh, intense experience, um, there was a guy Ivy, which is the room in number four, and I never got that story. I don't know if you did, uh, but I'd only had like you know one or two conversations, nothing even really that deep uh, with him before that morning. But during his meditation, you got to remember everybody's laying down with their eyes closed. So it was very apparent to everybody that somebody was having an experience, but not everybody knew it was me. Um, not everybody knew it was me the, that was bawling their eyes out in the corner like a small child um, trying to breathe. Um, but when we shared afterwards, Ivy said that his entire meditation, that all he could see was my face clearly in his head. And he didn't even know it was me that was having the experience. And then for him to say that God gave him a specific message that he was supposed to convey to me, and it was the exact message really that I needed, and it created an unlock for me um, to really unpack what I had just gone through, but kind of this fatherly love um, that was given to him to give to me that had he not shared and had he not had that experience, had I not had the experience and had us both not had that experience together, I would have never had that interaction. And and honestly, I would have never been able to communicate with God through him in that way. And there were other people um, that the very same thing, like their experience was directly affected by somebody else's experience and the person next to them and what they were going through. And again, it was just this group of 20 people from all over the world very diverse backgrounds, very diverse experience, very diverse lifestyles, but that in those moments were one. And it was just a powerful, powerful thing uh, to experience. Anything you want to mention before we kind of wrap up? I mean, there's a million things, there, but... There's a million things we could keep talking about, but I I think just overall, I, I know it's in Steve's heart to continue to have these. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny because he had asked, you know, if if there's somebody on your your heart or your mind that you feel like would want this, and you know, nobody came to my mind when he said that that was like specific. Um, I literally thought everybody, but yeah. then I thought, you know, well, let me like who specifically, God, like show me. 
And I got home and I was like, oh my gosh, Jay, like my husband, Mm -hmm. he absolutely like has to come. And I had sent Steve a message and um, I just think for a spouse to experience the same thing. And what's amazing, Jay has started doing breathing with me in the morning. Mm -hmm. He's doing cold showers. Like there's so, to do this with somebody you you know or and especially if you're married like if your spouse is open to doing this together it is something truly that can connect yeah. like we've i've been married 15 years and anyone that's been married for any length of time knows how hard that that is mm-hmm. and um it really i don't know for us it's just it's kind of this new this new thing that we're connecting on and you know it's it's so fun like and it's so funny because at first you know with holding our breaths it's like how long can you hold it for and you know i know at one point i was so excited i came into the office and i'm like tyler how i how long have you held your breath for and he goes 308 and i was like oh my gosh i was 306 and i thought for sure i'd beat him and and really that whole mindset has been just shifting out of focus because you know so many of us that are hard chargers and drivers and we're competitive with everything and and really taking a step back from that mindset that rules most of our day um and to just be i mean to truly be instead of do is that's where I want to live from, right? Mm-hmm. I want to live out of my being, not out of my doing. Yeah, so uh, one thing I want to especially do, we acknowledged Whoop uh, and their kind of contribution with these bands and just, I mean, I've been fascinated since then, just tracking every single day, uh, my rest, my recovery, my, sh- my daily strain. It's just been fascinating to learn more, but also Cotopaxi, um, donated backpacks for all of us that we used on the hike which that's a really really cool company that i had seen but i had not had any of their products before uh was just blown away kind of hearing some of their story and steve's interaction with the ceo of that company and i know that um it's his hope that whoop and um cotopaxi are involved in future events and i know there will be future events he's already announced that there's gonna be another one he hasn't announced the dates or or when and where and it's funny it's like part of me thinks well there's no way i cannot be at the next event but the nature of how these environments are created it can't be 100 people Mm -hmm. because it'd have been so difficult to really create those safe spaces for that connectedness when you have that many people um it's like so i want to be there but more importantly i want other people to experience what i experience even if that means that i'm not there um but i also want to be but i also want to be there (laughs) i have an idea reunion next year Mm -hmm. all right we gotta get back together i don't know if you saw it oh i did yeah Yeah. tonight for everybody to get on and kind of reconnect um but yeah i would i would highly recommend first of all follow steve i think it's weatherford five um on instagram make sure you're following him and when he puts out communication about this if anything that we have said kind of struck a chord with you of like man i need to feel something like that or you know i need to uh, experience some level of breakthrough or i just need to be surrounded by people that are all um you know high achievers and that are all not only high achievers but that are focused on becoming more at peace and more at rest and more uh present within with in their own uh, lives and can do that in a group setting yeah i highly recommend you look at going it's not cheap um, but it's certainly not expensive when you look at the things like i would have paid three times that having known now what i or having known yeah now what i didn't know when we first signed up for it um i don't know if there's a price tag i would have put on it um, if i would have known exactly what i would have gotten out of it um, so super proud of steve um, just for really taking the responsibility of putting this together and you could really see it in his heart he was like this is what i want to do with my life like i want to have these kind of experiences with these kind of people and and have god at the very 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 center of it and it was just beautiful i mean it's just that's not really the only way i can describe the weekend it's just a beautiful beautiful uh weekend but uh, to everybody that was there 
that's watching this, man, we appreciate you and we love you and we feel so connected to you. And we don't want those relationships uh, to just fall by the wayside. You know, obviously we get back and there's this coronavirus going on and everything's busy, but I want everyone to know that was there, that I've thought about each and every one of you every single day, um, prayed for you um, every single day and look forward to seeing you guys again. And for those that are watching this that did not experience it, you've got to experience it. Just point blank you gotta experience it 100%. so with that guys it's this week's episode of my living legacy and we're going to continue to unpack this as the weeks and months um keep moving forward because again these lessons like there's days where i'm like oh my gosh like that part was so incredible i didn't even realize i learned this during that time and i feel like i'm going to be unpacking that for the next year uh, more than likely so again big shout out to steve weatherford big shout out to dr trish and leah scott uh, obviously chef camu and her team um, was just absolutely uh, integral uh, in creating that environment for everybody and then whoop and cotopaxi for being a part of that too so with that guys that's this episode of the my living legacy vlog as always i'm tyler jack harris and i'm here with amanda maccabee we'll talk to you soon mm -hmm.